going to be working on a resin sculpture using blues, a little bit of blend, just inspired to do it. I've not done it before. And I thought, well, what a great opportunity for me to do it live. So maybe you can ask questions along the way or interact. Now I know that I've got people and maybe in Australia and America that's still asleep and you'll come on, but I will post my um, so this, this, it'll be probably be three times I'm on today. One which is going to talk through how I've set up my resin sculpture. Hello. And uh, the next one is going to be in four hours time once it's part cured where I start to bend it. And then four hours after that will be where I do the final sculpture. So you're on this journey with me. I might not have anybody in here because it's early morning. But if you are watching this on replay or live, remember thumbs up, subscribe, share Comments always help my channel and what I'm going to do now is just glove up and start to measure out my resin and uh, uh, you may want to know what I've done with my board. I've got them self-leveled already and I've got this film. It's an iridescent film. You normally use it or it's classed as florist film but you don't have to have it that way. It can be packing. It's a fairly thick one. I just lay it down flat, make sure there's not as many, not too many creases in there, bubbles and then it's a brilliant substrate for you to pour your resin on it'll help it leave a nice shiny edge and then it peels away beautifully and i am going to be working with i've got one opaque and three transparent so today if you're going to see that that is the resonate pigment opaque but it's the darkest indigo so i'm feeling that that might be the center area to maybe pop some of those colors and then i'm going to bring in the open oh you see that, that open water blue, which is just for you online UK. It's a beautiful transparent blue. And then we're going to come through with a light blue, which is resin eight. And that's a transparent pigment. And also a turquoise, which is resin eight, which is also transparent. The reason I'm using transparent today, I really love it summertime. I'm missing the ocean. When you put it in a window or anywhere where there's sun and you get to see through it, it adds to that effect of water. And I think it adds a lot of value to sculptures. Now, you can use opaque. It still will work. Uh, it's your own preference. And I have my bling, which I get from Amazon. They are called wedding table scatterings. You can get them in different sizes and colours. I quite like them and I like to do my edge with them. The reason being, I think it just adds a little bit of elegance to it and it makes it more look like it's a glass finish as opposed to uh, um, plastic, which is resin. So, hello, Taman. I hope I've said that right. And hello, Julie. Welcome. Uh, if you've got any questions along the way, feel free to ask. Oh, hello, Thea from South Africa. Well, welcome. Uh, let me know if it's the first time you've seen my channel or uh, seen me do a live. And if you've got any questions, ask along the way. I've not mixed my resin yet. You will have time once I've mixed my resin because we need to wait for it to cure until it starts heating up. But I wanted to show you the full process. And uh, use this time to connect with people and hang out. So I'm just double gloving up uh, because I get in a sticky mess, people that's been watching my live. So I've given myself a goal to do seven days lives straight because on... Two days ago, I had one and it didn't go well. I do once a week. I usually do it Jasmine night. And what could go wrong did go wrong. And it knocked my confidence. So then I'm like, hello, Annie. Hello, Lynn from Auckland, New Zealand and Australia. So I thought to myself, no, get on the horse and let's get over this fear. Now, I don't have a perfect setup for life. I just do this as a passion and a hobby in my own time. Over, over time, hopefully, I'll build up equipment so that it makes it a little bit more um, of an aesthetically pleasing for people to watch when they're live. But I'm Sharon, I'm real. Uh, just keeping it. Um, oh, we've got Anna from Birmingham. Hello. Right, I'm just going to get my Mastercast one-to-one, -one, which is the one I am using today. And I am going to mix up 400 mils. Now, I've got two boards that you can see and i've got the equivalent board behind you as well i just don't have enough area here last two were hooped <laughs> i'm glad you think so i like to entertain hello uh, angela uh from ohio ohio have i said that right ohio ohio sorry i'm just off camera just getting my cups organized 
This is where you could, if I could get it set up so you could see one where I'm working and two where I'm creating. Uh, you'd, you'd know where I were at the minute. So I've got one of my plastic cups. Um, if you've not used these before, they're really good for using over and over again, especially if you're going to do two to one parts, three to one parts, uh, four to one parts, or just the straight one on one. And you can wipe them out, reuse them over and over and be kinder to the environment. So as I was saying, I've got two boards here that's in view and I've got one that's out of view. But once I work on that board that's out uh, out of view, I will bring you all in to have a look at what I'm doing. It's just really in case I have some spare resin. I'm thinking if I did 300 mil, my sculpture would be uh, one of the smaller ones. But I'm going to push it and I'm going to do 400 mil. Oh, you can see that static uh, in the resin coming around there. It doesn't really matter whether you mix uh, hardener first or resin first. Whatever works for you. I'm getting right to the end of my Mastercast now, which is always exciting because then I can start to look at which resin do I want to play with and work with next. And when I say work with, I buy them all myself. This is me just talk, talking to you. Anyway, I would imagine that at this time of the day, most people are going to be at work or in bed. So I'll miss most people on this one, but hopefully in four hours time, once this is done, you'll come back or watch the video on replay later where you get to see me set the sculpture. So this is the resin I'm using, which is the one from Elikem. It's Mastercast one-to-one. -one. Um, I buy a very a big one, so it'll last me a long time. And yeah, it's just a really good all rounder one. And it works really well with sculptures. There's quite a few out there that do work well with sculptures. But it's just a matter of practicing and seeing your limitations with each resin and just be willing to give it a go. Obviously, start smaller to start with because you don't want to waste resin. It's expensive. And we also want to be kinder to the environment. But it's quite warm where we are today. So I'm imagining that my working time is going to be less before it starts to rapidly heat up. So preparation is key for when you're doing sculptures. I've made sure I've got my colours ready, my boards ready, everything's levelled, all my equipment's to hand. And then I can divide and conquer with colours as it's getting to the time where it heats up. Because once it heats up, I am basically just going to pop my colour down. I'm not really going to be doing any uh, design, blending off colour or anything like that. I want the colours to be the hero and them complementing each other to be the hero. So we have Annie, who's in bed. Oh, 9am, so just woke up. We might get some uh, people from America on. Anyway, apologies if you do have Siri, but it's going to go. Hey Siri, set timer for three minutes. Three minutes. I've got a stirring stick that is a silicone spatula for cooking. And I just use it over and over. Remembering to scrape around your sides every so often and around the bottom. You want to make sure that the liquid is totally blended in and you're not seeing any of those little worms or streaks or oil patches in there. And that'll let you know when you've got a good consistency. So I'm going to have a little look what's here. So we have stick here. Oh, hello. Open it and yeah. Oh, very nice. Um, yeah. Oh, Angela, thank you so much. I've got a very weird dialect, although um, I'm Yorkshire, so I think that comes through thick and fast. But then I lived in Australia for 16 years, so every so often there's a little twang in there. And then I came back and was in Sheffield for a year, so a little bit around uh, my northern dialect. And then I've been down in Southampton for four years, so there's a little bit of that. So... I wouldn't know what my accent sounds like, really. Greetings from Germany. Gabriella, welcome. It's nice to see some European people in here. I hope wherever you are, you're safe and well. Let me know in chat which one of you have worked with resin before. I would love to know that. <laughs> I love the way I say project. Oh, hello. We have a VIP in here. Pouring your heart out. Hello. 
amazing work you've been doing with resins and I especially liked how you think out thought outside of the box when it comes to your popcorn sculpture loving that I speak Sharonese <laughs> I do I do have a mixture anyway um I think with resin uh with when you're doing sculptures you have to realize that I can't tell you what the working time is and that transpar that transparent <laughs> transpires to every single person in every different country and every different resin type. It's one of those where you have to babysit it to start with and you have to be willing to keep going back and touch testing it and do little experiments to understand the resin type and to understand temperatures make a huge difference pigments that you're having make a difference how you're applying it makes a difference how much heat you apply to it makes a difference so you just have to understand what your recipe is yeah that bowl was a lot of fun i'm doing um a very basic one today i just felt the need i'm missing the indian ocean i'm missing being over in that australian surrounding by that beautiful ocean so i'm just working with blues four different types of blues one opaque one and i'm just going to build in four different layers hey siri stop apologies if that set yours off and we're going to put a bit of bling on there so it's going to be a traditional sharon type bowl but i really want one for one of my bathroom windows and the one i did with the other blues really catches my eyes so i am going to be working with that hello chipper doodle hello necessity it's nice uh, to see yeah I think it's because I've got the day off my day job so I've got the ability to do one I've got lots of different projects I'm working on behind the scenes I'm just giving it another little mix just to make sure it's all in there so there's lots of air bubbles they will dissipate because I'm going to be letting this stand for about 15 minutes it's going to all come to the top we are going to apply our heat gun as well and you can see that there's no stringy bits in there so you know that you've got a good mixture of resin now this is the waiting game if i leave it in a pot this big it's going to cause it to heat up rapidly quicker now that's good because that'll help remove your bubbles and you're ready to play with it but at the same time i want to mix my colors or should i say distribute my resin evenly so i've got my colors ready to hand now i find that works best for me because when I start to panic, because it goes from being, okay, I can wait, I can wait, to suddenly, oh dear, let's pour this. Uh, and then you want to then try and sculpt it. You want to add in your bling. You want to make sure there's no dust particles. But if you do it too early, it's going to run and you're not going to have any control. If you do it just at the right time, you're not going to get too much movement. You're going to get a nice distribution of your resin without any thin pieces that potentially will crack when you're sculpting it. Now, I like to do freeform sculptures. That's not for everybody. It's just my preference. And that means I just let the resin tell me what it wants to do. And then I love it when it gets to the part where you can sculpt it. Uh, that, to me, is the most therapeutic part. Um, so, yeah, I'll have a little look, see what questions they are. I'm glad that you love blues. And um, Sandy, hello. So, I clean my utensils as I go. I just hate cleaning up sticky mezzim. Um pouring your heart out what are you like do you clean up as you go or do you wait now i clean as i go because once it gets really sticky i hate touching resin i think it's because i've worked with it for so many years and i've got into so many sticky messes in the past that when it gets so sticky i'm like no i don't like that uh, it gets like rock or treacle and you're trying to then clean it off and it's so much harder so i clean as i go what's your preference uh, you're attempting UV resin for the first time today. Any major tips? UV resin. Ooh, please, please, please make sure you wear a respirator. Please make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. If you're going to be working with UV resin and you're going to apply thick coats, you're going to see a dramatic amount of uh, smoke coming up where it's doing its thermal event. The tip I've learned with UV resin is thin layers. Build it up slowly, thin layers. Uh, babysit it, use all your safety protocols, uh, but thin layers that if you try and put two thicker layers on you can get it to uh, dramatically cure unevenly i've not worked with it as much as epoxy resin but in the short times i've done it i've learned if i dump it all in a jewelry pot myself in one go it's not going to cure evenly whereas if you build it up over time let you clean as you go too <laughs> nice surprise again yes purple we are going for it i i 
I wanted to get back on the horse after my disastrous live that I did um, the other week. Uh, not the other week, the other day. I've decided that, yes, get back on the horse, get used to it. Then I might be able to uh, have better lives. <laughs> she says. All right, now behind the scenes, I'm just going to get some cups. And we are going to start to distribute the resin. And I am going to have to keep touching it like this, although I know I normally have a 20 minute window. If I set my timer. Um, it could dramatically change very quickly. I think that's the excitement of it sometimes. I need to put my hair up before it falls in the resin because you're going to see me landing over. Now, for the purpose of this lives, I do not have a respirator on. Apologies. I would recommend that you do wear a respirator. This is why I'm only committing to doing it for a week because I want to protect my lungs. <clears throat> All right. Behind the scenes, I'm tying my plaits up on top of my head again so I look like uh, a very old version of Princess Leia. And... Um, we're going to go with this and I'll show you the pigments. Now, I'm very jealous of people that are based over in America and Australia because I've seen some amazing pigments that people use over there that I suppose you could get in the UK, but it just ends up costing so much with shipping. Um, but there are some beautiful pigments this way as well. So I would imagine that there's some that you'd like to get your hands on over here. So I've got, oh, I've nearly forgot to add my special ingredient. Which is that super sparkle white. Oh, got the wrong one. Hello, Zeus. Have you got... Oh, Zeus is running around with a pair of my dirty socks trying to get me to uh, chase him. So this is a super sparkle white. I really love this. Now, you can... there are other brands out there that work really well. I've been using one, which is the Ignition Dust from Just For You online. Uh, but the reason I really love this one is the glitter that's within the white powder dissipates really evenly throughout your resin. So you're not having to deal with... Look at that, I've cleaned my uh, spatula now I've got to use it again. What am I trying to say? So it looks quite white, but most of that white's going to disappear. And when I mix this in, the glitter will distribute evenly. Now it's not an obvious tacky glitter and you don't see it in your resin always when you're looking straight on but if you add it in your sculptures if it's on a window or if there's a light on it it just captures it and it glistens beautifully and I think it adds value it's not for everybody but in my world sparkle makes everything better let me see if I can show you a shot where it's you might not be able to see it I'm still don't think you're going to be able to see it in this light, but it sort of has a distribution all the way through. And then when I'm mixing it in with the other pots as well, it's going to help distribute it again. So I've got to clean my stick again now. That's because I'm trying to talk while do. Which is why I'm doing these lives, to try and get better at it. Because uh, most of the time I'm just getting right into my creative zone uh, and creating and do voiceovers. Good morning! Johnny, what a beautiful surprise. Hello, solitary. You've been cooking since you were nine. Oh, you, you're now 57. Yeah, and yesterday everything I cooked was in the dumpster fire. Oh, so you even have bad days, even though you've been cooking all that time. So let me just get organised. So I have four colours. Don't know why I've got six pots out. Now my indigo, which is the uh, deepest indigo or the darkest indigo, it's opaque. So I'm not going to want to use too much of that. So in my head, I'm just thinking, how do I want to distribute the colours? But it might make a nice centrepiece uh, or add to the middle of it. Now I'm not too worried about my stain that I've just got on my paper there because I will be able to utilize that within my sculpture or wipe it off and I need to keep a bit of clear I always go around the edge with a little bit of clear let's see how much is left so that'll be too much and the reason I do that is it's how I attach my gems 
or my crystals as I call them, to the uh, to the sculpture to just add to a little bit of that glass effect. You don't have to do it. You can do it directly into the colour. I found when I do it directly into the colour, I tend to lose some of the crystals. So it's just a way to capture it. Now, you can tell that this resin is coming towards the end of its shelf life because it's got a little bit of a yellow tinge to it. You might not be able to see it. I can. But once you do crack open your resin you have to be mindful that you do have a certain shelf life on it before it does start to yellow all resin yellows you have to understand that you can talk to any supplier you want they'll say that there's um protection in there like uv protection and it definitely does and where you store your resin can help with it uh, yellowing and if you're doing things outside uh, for sculptures outside or paintwork outside do know that it will always discolor uh, there is no getting away with that. However, some brands tolerate it a lot better. And when you add pigment to it, it tolerates it better. So it hides the yellowing. So it's not so obvious. So please bear that in mind. And that's why when I do sculptures, I tend to only put the clear around the edge where the crystals are. So hopefully that should hide some of that yellowing. And if you're unsure what your resin will be like, or you don't understand what I mean, do a coaster or something, a small piece of work, and keep it, whether it be in a drawer or whether it be on your windowsill for 12 months and then go back and revisit it and you'll see what I mean about the discoloration. Anyway, I am, Johnny, I am good. I am on with a sculpture. I felt inspired to do one. I'm now going to be adding my colours. So I can remove my levelling. It is important that you do level your board as well because if you want to control your sculpture to some degree... You want to make sure you know where it's going to be running. Sometimes if it runs, though, don't stress. Adds character to your design. What can I say? All right. So we're going to start with the, the opaque one, which is the darkest indigo. I worked with this on my northern light one, and I fell in love with this color. So I'm going to use this uh, in some of my up and coming art. It's so deep. A little bit. That might actually be overkill because I don't want it to be too black just look at that i don't know if you're going to capture that color there i don't know i'll twist it around for you i don't know if you're going to be able to see it but it is just lush i don't know if you can see that there so i put the tiniest little bit i basically dipped my uh, stick in there pulled it out and even though this is opaque because i've only put a little bit in it's still transparent so oh Oh, it's like having a, your favourite cake and feeling very satisfied after. <laughs> when I look at a colour like that, I mean, oh, it's just lush. So glad I chose that one. I might decide to uh, do another sculpture with that colour. So sometimes you can work with opaque colours. Yeah, it's like a very deep aqua. So if you can work with some opaque colours. If you just put a tiny little bit in there, you can still get that semi-transparent look. So my next darkest colour is going to be in the slightly larger one so this one is the just for you online the open water one i worked with this one last night and this is another color that makes me very excited when i'm mixing it and a little potential will go a long way i'm putting slightly more in than the darkest indigo because this is a transparent color anyway uh, but you should see the tones look at that i've got gunk all over my stick already as we blend this in it's got a very similar tone to start with, but you've just got that slightly more bluer and lighter colour coming through. But again, it's another beautiful colour. It's like, did you ever have jubilees when you were a kid? Really nice icy poles. Here you get that nice blue one. It reminds me of that colour. I mean, I don't know if you can see that, but oh, <laughs> it's like eye candy. All right, so two beautiful colours in my opinion. And then we're going to come through to the slightly... Um, I think I'm going to go then to the light blue. I know, aren't these lovely? <laughs> so it, it is like a deep aqua, but it was called Darkest Indigo. So this blue one here... Uh, it's just classed as light blue. It is a transparent one. So you're going to get some of those tones coming through again. So it looks like an indigo there. But once you put it in there, you're going to start to see that nice ice blue, in my opinion, coming through. 
You know what? I, I, I should start doing it. I should start sending kits out. I mean, look at that. Oh, now this one just reminds me, I don't know, of paddling pools for some reason, even though you never go in water like that, but just that feeling. Yes, I've tried Arteza Mica pigments. They're a nice pigment to work for. Um, yeah, I've tried them. Oh, I think I might add a tiny little bit more in that because even though that's got a nice solid colour in there, I don't want it getting lost too much. So I'm just going to add a sneak little bit. And I think this is the thing with pigments. Um, they, they're all different as far as the volume you want to add to get the desired colour. Now, with opaques or with transparents, the colour is probably going to stay the same. But... You have to watch that you don't do too much so that it's not going to uh, spoil the chemicals in your uh, resin. So that was just another blob that went in there. So the colour itself shouldn't change, but it's more when I lift it out the cup, it's going to hold that colour a little bit more, in my opinion. Okay, that'll do. And then we're going to come to one of my favourite colours, which is a turquoise. You can't go wrong with turquoises, can you? So this is going to complement nicely, I think, the indigo. So again, it's just really the stick that's covered at the end. I might try and get a little bit more out. Now we're going to go in and give this a little stir so you get that nice green coming through. I'm glad I used these clear cups for you so you can really appreciate the colour. Yeah, they is. It's like, would you like a cocktail? <laughs> They are actually cocktail sticks and you can use them over and over again. You can get a pack from Amazon. There's 50 in there and it'll probably last you your lifetime. Uh, they are the best, I think. So if you've got delicate areas you want, I mean, look at that. All right, so I think we've got four beautiful colours there. What I am going to do is remove my sticks because I am going to be hazardous. And when I'm reaching over to them, I'm probably going to knock them over, which is the, <laughs> the thing that's been happening for me this week. And uh, I'll then just use one stick as I'm needing to scrape out the end. And stay a little bit organised. And just remember as well, I do have a board behind me for the people that's just joined me. I've got two here. I've made sure these are all level. And behind me, which you can't see, I've got a third one. So I'll swivel the camera if I need to use that. That's going to be for any uh, leftovers. And potentially that's going to be the centre. But we will see how we go. Oh, I'm glad you're enjoying these colours. All right. Oh, you got them in the States as well, in the dollar store. Yeah, you've got to think creatively. I reckon you've got to go to, like, um, your dollar stores or your cooking stores. And there's so many things that you can use, that you can adapt. And one, it'll be more cost effective and then better on the environment. And you can use them over and over. And, and they just wipe off beautifully. I've just got, basically, a wipe. It just goes through. And then they're all clean and ready to go. Some discolour over time because if you're using a highly strong pigment like amber it's going to stay in it but it's not going to come through to when you use it to your next resin so now we're just on a waiting game i've got my clear so i'm going to move that off that's going to be for the gems at the end it's starting to warm up i can feel it we've got the deep indigo and we are now just waiting for these bubbles to come to the top which they are uh, I wish I could show you what it's feeling like, but I'm getting that nice warm feeling. So it is starting to heat up. I just need to hold my nerve a little bit more. I'm going to help it out a little bit by, watch your ears. I'm just going to give a quick blast with um, the heat just to try and get rid of some of them bubbles from the top so that we're not pouring them in directly. That's all you need. So that's removed the top bubbles and that's going to help force it as well to start curing. Now, in my mind, I've got to work out, am I just going to do one colour per board or am I going to add a few different colours into each of the, um, the ones I'm going to do? What am I trying to say? Each piece. So when I look at my one on the windowsill, I love it because it's got one clear layer, then another clear layer, and then another clear layer, clear layer with colours. But I also like it if they blend a little bit into each other. But if my centrepiece one, I want to be darker... And then I want to come out slightly lighter. 
so that when you're looking in it's just got so much depth in the middle so that's what I'm thinking at this stage but we'll see I, I sort of I change it up as I go I could it could be that I use the middle dark in each one of them but I do want to graduate so potentially I might end up with just two layers for this and then I might have to come back and do a third bigger layer. And I think that's the beauty of sculptures. You can add, you can add to it. If you take your time and your patience, you could work on one layer, sculpt the centerpiece, then you can do another layer on a different day and add it and sculpt it so it, it sets in it beautifully. And then that's how you can make the really big ones. Uh, so it's just something for you to consider. Well, hello, John. Welcome. Hello, Dances with Aardvarks. Hello Cheryl from uh, Texas. It's so nice to see people waking up over there and, and joining me. Um, but Solitary, you brought up a good question about the monthly kits. I don't know if I'd be able to do it at an affordable price for people, to be honest. Uh, but it's definitely something to consider. I could also set monthly challenges for people. Um, but it's just the cost, isn't it, of shipping it to everybody. Uh, and because it's just me, myself and I, I'm not really a business but I suppose the world's your oyster you can try what you want and if you're not aware as well these this is the typical uh, bling that I get just put in wedding table scatterings you'll get different sizes you get different colors I prefer clear I have worked with some different colors but I don't know you just get something that you find is aesthetically pleasing to you and so once we've gone through this and laid all this, we will then come back in um, four hours time. If you're available or not, you can watch the back plate and you'll see me do the next stage. And I will be conscious of the angle of my camera and I'll try and move it, but not move it too much for you all. But we are literally just waiting for it to heat up enough uh, for me to lay it down. It's still quite cool. Oh, it's so, um, yeah, it's not, not ready yet. You're just going to have to humour me a little bit while we wait in because if I do it too early, it's just all going to run off and we're not going to get the desired effect that we're looking for. Ah, a monthly challenge would be good. You're doing one with Polymore Cray Group and I'm the mod for that. Oh, that's good to know. Good morning. Is it Louis Jean? Have I said that right? Let me know if i've said that wrong uh, and that's from oregon well done well so for people that's just joined hello thank you so much if you find that i'm adding value to your day or you're enjoying watching this please consider giving me a thumbs up um, and leaving a comment uh, if you're not already consider uh, joining uh, but yeah, let me know if this is your first time watching myself or your channel while we're just waiting for our resin to heat up. We're working on a sculpture today. It's been a while since I've done one and then I was uh, just woke up this morning inspired. When I get the day off my day job, it's very nice to um, just come and work on a sculpture. I find them quite therapeutic. And I've got so many people wanting to purchase something. I've just not done it. I'm terrible at putting things up for sale. Terrible. All right. I want to know as well um, what projects you're all currently where, working on yourself. What are you working on either today or this week? Me, I'm working on some Jasmineite projects behind the scenes. I've got some sunsets coming on behind the scenes. Working on a little bit of jewellery. Working on a bit of ocean. But I didn't decide to work on the ones I'm already working on. I decided to create a new one. Cheryl, your first time watching. Well, thank you so much. I hope you're finding value in this. Or I hope that you'll learn something. And maybe come back. Sorry, while I just reach over. I can see that there's a little crease there. Just trying to make sure there's no crease in there. The weight of the resin will push it down. But if you do have any obvious creases in your material you're going to use, it will cause the resin to go very thin in that area. And then when you start to sculpt it, that's when you're going to come into problems. Ooh, cocker bands. His A to Z crazy working on. Andrew. Hello. Do I ever? No, but you know what, Julie? I am inspired by the fact that you make your own moulds and everything like that. And 
uh, I I've been thinking of going back and watching one of your videos where you create um, your chalking to make shapes. I have considered doing it for my uh, roses that I've been doing and my flowers. Um, and I don't know why I don't do it. I think it's just because I like the challenge of what my resin is going to do and how I'm going to work with it. But I am considering it. I think I might have to go back and rewatch one of yours, Julie, and get get inspired on what it is that I need to do because I keep, every time I go to the hardware store or anything I think oh let me go one because I've got I've got I think I've got the gun and I think I've got what I need I think I'm just scared to do it <laughs> uh polymore clay with fish coral and resin paint and it's purple uh Lorraine hello Robin from North Carolina Julie, you are a machine uh, with your dedication to art and how you're willing to try so many different things and push it and give it all a go. Uh, you're quite inspiring. All right, we are getting to a nice um, nice temp, but not quite there. Just going to give it a couple more minutes and then we'll be ready to pour. Uh, and this is what I mean when I tell people that there is no set time I can give you to say roughly how long it's going to work. This is where you have to be willing to learn with your own resin and your environment with what it is that um, from a time frame point of view, uh, but it is not a one time approach fits all. And I think uh, Julie learns and apology, Julie, I don't mean to speak on your behalf. You fill it in, but you're quite uh, good when you're doing your tests and your research and you write times down, you learn from it, uh, you adapt and I think that's the level you've got to go to if you're, if you're learning uh, with some of this. You haven't plucked up the courage to do a beach scene yet. Oh, you've just got to go with emotions and you've got to go with just a feeling and not be afraid. Because what is the worst that can happen? You do another layer. Uh, you've, I've bought some polymer clay, but I've not used it yet. So I'm, I'm curious to give it a go. I just I want to have a go at... Um, Using it for creating the shapes of some moulds I want to do. Uh, maybe that's not what you should do with it, but that's what I'm inspired to do. I, I am inspired by the people that make jewellery with it. I wish that... I don't know if I've got a delicate enough hand to do that. Paint brushes, yeah. All right. What I am going to do, just to see how this is really responding, is I'm going to put a tiny little bit here. Can you see that Okay just because I want to see how it's flowing and how it stays. So I don't know if you can see that very well, but that ended up doming quite nicely, but it is flattening out a little bit, but it's not necessarily running fluid like water. So we're, we're on the verge, just a little bit longer. And you can hold your nerves slightly longer than you do with art for this, because I am literally just going to dump the colour uh, on the board. Uh, and then even if it's curing, I can still add my gems around the edge and it's going to stick. Uh, so it's spreading a little bit. Oh, it's just I just wish I could show you how yummy that blue is. <laughs> Let's have a little look. Um, oh, I'm inspired you to try an ocean scene again, Johnny. Yes. And look, I'm double gloved. So when I get my sticky glove problem, I'm not going to, like, my camera's not going to stick to my hand and everything like that. Um... Definitely, teach, it will definitely teach patience, yeah. Dominoes, I love dominoes. And so many people say, oh, well, you can see the different colours so you, you know which are the colours. And it's like, you're missing the whole point that it's just for fun and it's for beauty. And it's, uh, I, I don't think I'd study the pattern behind dominoes. Yes, beach in their glass bottle with some starfish. They are beautiful uh, when they look really well. Yeah, these are just yummy colours, aren't they? I just, I don't know if you really are seeing the true colour in these. Sorry, anyway, I'm touching my, uh, touching my resin again, but I think, I think we're going to be good. So, I think I am going to mix up my colours. I'm going to start pouring. I'm going to try and pour left-handed, even though I'm right-handed, just so that you can see what I'm doing. I will bring you in closer, uh, but I am going to... I always add my resin slightly apart from the other resin to start with. 
oh look at that lush colour because I want to see I want to let it self level and, and bleed into each other oh and you can see that it's um, still got movement in there but the edge is still staying slightly down so that shows me that that is gonna work really well and then if I do need to force it into each other to connect I will do but oh oh that is a feast for the eyes so i'm just going slowly to start with but i can feel this resin heating up now but i'm thinking i might just um rotate the color slightly with each one but try and make sure there's going to be colors within each sculpture so i'm going to come back and i'm going to add oh wait no <laughs> knowing which order I've done it in. Just going to fill those gaps where I know it's not going to fill each other. Not fill each other? What, what even was that language? I mean, touch each other. And if I don't like the look of it, I'll add my swirl in there. Uh, and then I can learn for my next one. But I like to be fairly organic. See, that colour's not got a defined split between each other but it's still lumal lum malicious what even was that sharon all right so a bit more in the middle i'm just gonna force it all out there that looks like a dragon eye now doesn't it um what do i want to do with this let me have a little look I really like the look of that sorry just off camera behind the scenes just sorting out my stick all right what i might do is sort of replicate that a little bit but maybe have a um, more defined center but that is looking lovely uh, in my own opinion if i do say so myself so we're going to go now with a little bit more confidence around the darker middle i'll keep some more back for later just gonna let that spread a little bit we'll come with the uh, open blue dark open blue was this color called anyway the darker blue i'll go back through the colors again for the people that weren't here but i'm just gonna let that join up i just love the effect on that i quite like the um the gradiating colors might not be for everybody but i'm enjoying that this resin is really heating up you can start to feel it i mean it's still okay to hold it in your hands but you can feel it definitely quite warm now so i might only end up with two layers For this project and then i might have to come and do a fourth layer if i feel it needs it so i'm just mindful that i want this to be a bit thinner so it doesn't go over the board ed edge speak sharon but i'm just going to add a little bit of um interest by making it slightly longer that way because i know when i'm going to do my sculpting i am going to I like to have it so that it, the edges uh, dip out a little bit or are more pronounced. If that's even the right word I'm trying to use. I'm just mindful that I need to now. So I'm going to let that one do its bit here. But I am going to now add some more around the other one here. Almost looks like an eye. I don't know if you can see. I apologise for the reflection. I can't do anything about that. That's out of my um, gift, but I will take you in closer. Now, you can see that there's a little bit of lines coming through. I should have taped it down. But the resin is 
is okay. The reason I'm concerned about it is not because of the lines it's going to leave in there. I think it'll add character. But I need to make sure my resin isn't going to be too thin in those areas. So I'm just doing my bit to try and straighten it out. All right, so best go around here. So with this one, I'm going to add some darker around the edge. Because this is going to be the middle piece. So I don't mind if my middle piece is going to have darker colours or a slightly different pattern around it. I think it'll add interest, in my opinion. But, oh, that colour is just dreamy. All right, so I'm going to get my stick to start to scrape this out. Because I want to make sure I make the most of it i might add some tiny little bits around here and this is where i like the fact that it's quite organic when you're doing such as this because you don't know what you're doing i knew i was going to work with blues i knew my tones i didn't know how i was going to lay it out i'd sort of got an idea and once i start working with the resin or what the resin is inspiring me to do that's when ideas sort of come out or you start to work with it. Oh, don't worry about getting your drips in like that. So I'm just adding a tiny little bit around here. Just see if it's going to bleed into that light colour there. Just to try and balance it out and give a bit of interest on that side. Apologies that my chicken wings are probably covering the screen now. Um... I'm just adding a little bit right at the edge. I've got virtually no resin left. I just want to add a little bit of that interesting indigo, which is just, I think today it's my new favourite colour. So there's no resin there. You can tell how hard it's been worked because of how tacky it is now. So we push the resin to the max with the working time, but... I like that. All right. Put that one down, Sharon. And let's go to the dark blue here. It's going to be quite a trippy dish, this. So I do want my inside um, sculpture to be smaller um, than this one here just so it sits nicely in the middle. And then this way I can gather more of my, um, the pleating or the design or the shape, whatever word you want to use. I can, uh, um, I can't talk, I'm, uh, I do this, sorry, I'm just stretching over here. What am I trying to say? This, the outer one is what creates the real design and the shape and the flow. Whereas the inside is going to add interest, but also depth if you've got the darker colours in there. That's what I'm trying to say. Anyway. Oh, loving it. That, that's, a, that's a real me when I'm standing back and looking at the colours and think, you know what? I really like that. I'm really happy with that. Just trying to control where some of the drip offs are going but i can't get any more resin out of that but that is lush if i do say so myself and the, the if you've not got your board level this is where it'll start to make its own shapes but as long as it's not going to go over the edge if it is you just get some sticks to um prop it up one end to try and force the resin to be where you want it to be all right, so that's two gone. I'm going to try and come around now with my green. Oh, it's like treacle. <laughs> it's just, I'm getting in a sticky mess, people, and I cannot see what's going on here. So I hope you're all amusing yourself while I am in the midst of creating my, um, I think, a very, very beautiful sculpture. In my own opinion, I, I'm not going to swirl these together at all. I'm just going to let the colours be the hero and hopefully the shape be the hero. Uh, so Lee, welcome to my impromptu lives that I'm doing. I just thought I'd bring you all on the journey with me with a sculpture if you've got time and if you're interested. Um, we're nearly towards the end of the first stage. 
all I'm going to do is put my clear around the edge now. I'm just making the use of all the colours I've got. I love this design. This one looks like a night. It reminds, if you've ever been to Greece and they have the all seeing eye or they have that blue eye where I think it's a positive um, spirit or a positive God that's watching over you. It, it's taking me back to Greece, to those. I am desperate for a holiday, can you tell? All right, using the last of what is in this cup. And then we are going, I've got a little bit of the light blue left, so we may as well get that. Look at it, it's just like treacle. I don't know if you can see it. That's, that's how you have to leave it when you are working on sculptures. This is probably at the max it'll go. Anyway, almost looks tie-dye as well. All right, so I will come over with a little bit of heat just to remove any big bubbles, but I'm not too concerned if sculptures have bubbles. And then we're going to add the clear around the edge and then the blings, and then I'll see if you've got any questions. And we're almost done. All right, so look at that sticky mess. Don't know who's joined me, but new subscriber, Fiona, welcome. Thank you so much for the sub. Really appreciate it. All right, so we are now going around with our clear. Tiny little bit just to help. Oh, that's so hot. A little bit of clear around just for where I'm going to put the gems. I'm going to have to come back and add some more to this area. I don't know if I'm going to have enough clear for the big one, which I should have really put the clear on the big one. But if not, I'm going to do it in the... It's almost too hot to touch. Sorry, this is me just concentrating on trying to get the clear out where I need to go and trying to make sure I'm moving at a pace where I'm going to get most of the clear around the sculpture. I find it like patting my head and patting my head and rubbing my tummy at these stages where I just lose the ability to speak. But I'm sure you know what I mean if you are doing any kind of arts or crafts when you get to certain stages you just sort of just tune out and you're just focusing on what you're doing. It's like when you drive home from work and you think, how did I get home from work? I've got no idea. All right, I'm going to scrape the last little bits I've got, but you may or may not be able to see, but there is a very nice domed edge on my resin and that shows that it's not going to be moving. It should more or less stay as it is. You could wiggle some clear around if you wanted to get... Um, Look at that, by scraping it, how much more you do get out. I'm going to add some more around my clear. Just trying to make sure where I'm putting it now, it is going to touch the other clear because there's not going to be a lot of movement in this. And then we are going to add our beads and a bit of bling. And then this stage is done. And then hopefully when we come back in four hours time, this will have cured beautifully. All right. Hopefully you're relaxing and you've enjoyed this so far. Hopefully you're inspired by these colours. And hopefully it's a relaxing start to your day or end to your day, depending on where you are in the country. And I really do appreciate each one of you, even if it's just five minutes popping in and saying hello, because I know time is precious for people and people with their own art channels will be busy. So it's much appreciated. I think once I've done this one, I'm going to take Zeus for a walk in the local park area, unwind. Oh gosh, look, I'm in a sticky mess. Sticky, sticky mess, but I refuse to let that resin go to waste. But I literally do not have any working time with it now. That, is, that ship has sailed. All right, so I'll be able to put my stuff out of the way now so I don't make a mess. Get all my excess off my stick and I'm going to come through with a heat gun. And now I'm not coming through with a heat gun to cause it to move. It is just to try and remove some of those excess bubbles. 
not all of them, just the excess. And then we are going to put our bling down. Hello from Melbourne, Tracy. Fiona, I really do appreciate your subscribing and watching for the first time. Evening in Adelaide, so hello Donna. Um, yeah, I hope you've been well. Morning, Lee. I'm so happy that you joined. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I'm so sorry, Lee. I'll tell you why they're not announced. Because they were impromptu. Because the one, the story is... Oh, sorry, I'm getting my bling out a bit early. So, uh, uh, apologies for the noise. Just going to get rid of my obvious bubbles. And then I'll tell you about why these lives are being impromptu. So I didn't want to apply too much heat. Just going across. Don't let your heat gun touch the paper. Don't let it really touch the resin. Some of those bubbles will st still keep coming out. You don't want to. So I set fire, but we're going around. So, Lee, uh, were you with me on the night when I, two nights ago, when everything went wrong? Oh, my God, look, Johnny. Johnny, this is why I don't like sticky gluns. <laughs> gluns, gloves. I mean, <laughs> I mean, look at it. It is just the most disgusting thing to work for when it gets to this sticky, like, rock kind of stage. It stresses me out. I'm just going to take my gloves off to remove that stress. And to remove me unnecessarily, um, ruining gems. But I double glove, so it's okay. Yeah, so, see, I took my thing. So slowly, I have a spoon. You don't have to do it. I just do it and I drop it around the edge. And then I push it into the resin. So I don't pop it on top of the resin. The reason being, your resin is going to keep bleeding out for a little bit. And because I just want a delicate, almost dual lacing on it, um... If you put it in, it's going to flat your resin and it's going to force your resin to continue to move. So I'm trying, where possible, to just slightly break the dome and push it into it. But as the resin is going to keep moving, it's going to um, grab hold of some of these gems and give you that nice edging. Anyway, back to why I'm, I'm not announcing the lives. I had a disastrous day. Anything that could have gone wrong did go wrong. It stressed me out so much that I wanted the ground to open up and... Uh, swallow me up and um, make it all better because the, nothing worked the art didn't work it was just a typical day when we have a bad day in the studio and so the next night I thought I've got to do another live otherwise I'll be too scared to do another live the following week and so I did a live yesterday and it went a lot better and then I set a challenge to myself that on my day off work today which is rare because normally I'm at work through the week or I work the weekend that I would do a sculpture and I thought I may as well do it live. Then people can ask questions or not, or just watch the process or not. Uh, but it's a way for me to get used to doing lives within the confines of my tent and making sure that my setup's better. But so for this week, Lee, I am going to attempt to do a live a day. Most of them are going to be uh, of an evening. Um, so between seven or eight, but on my day off today and Thursday, I'm going to do a few lives throughout the day. So today there'll probably be another two lives. So I'll do one in four hours time when this is set. Hey, Siri, set timer for four hours. It's quite warm here. So four hours should be enough for this, for me to be able to bend my sweet spot. You might not be able to see this in camera, but I'm just putting my jewels around the bottom edge. I am going to take you off. Only one timer can be set at a time. Hey, how many timers do I have set? Hey Siri, set timer for four hours. Four hours, starting now. Siri sometimes does not like me or my accent. I kid you not. Anyway, so if you are going to be around later today, uh, come back and join me. So I've set my timer for four hours from now. So potentially, if the resin's good... I will start to do the second live, which will be showing you how I'm going to hang my sculpture. Uh, but if not, you can always watch the replay. And then there should be another four hours from then or three hours, depending on how it's going to cure with the resin. I'll be back to do the final stage of sculpture and then I can do the reveal tomorrow, tomorrow night in my live, as well as uh, maybe do another quick piece of work. So that was a very long answer to your question, Lee. 
<laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I, uh, yeah, no, I got, because I work shifts where I work, so my days are fairly um, inconsistent, which doesn't matter because normally my lives will be on a Sunday, which even if I'm at work or not, I can do uh, a live. But because I've been so far behind at putting videos out, I thought this is giving me a gift of time to connect with you all, get some lives out whilst I'm still working on projects behind the scenes and then hopefully catch up. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I can't wait to take you in to see these colours, but I have to get my beads down, which is a labour of love. Because I'm trying not to drop any into the main piece. I'm contemplating on Thursday doing some flowers live for you all. So I don't know if you'll find that interesting. So I can either do another sculpture or some flowers. But I really feel like going back and doing a second uh, go at a bunch of flowers. But maybe do them in some of these colours. Do them a bit different. So maybe they'll be like ocean flowers. Just pushing it in. If you do have the odd crystal that pops into your resin, don't worry, you can either pick it out or you can just leave it. I tend to just leave them unless they are dramatically impacting the composition. The reason the clear, I think, also works really well is when I show you, some of the colour bleeds into it slowly while it's curing and it gives you a nice um, floating or a feathering effect. All right. I am so warm. Hot stuff. All right, so all I'm doing now is just checking, has my resin got contact with all these beads? So I'm now just shoving them up. Sorry if my chicken wings are in the way. So I'm literally just shoving up my beads into the resin now, not on top of it, into it. That gives me a chance to see if the resin is going to keep moving forward and if I need to add any more around the edge, like just there. And any excess you've got that is not going to be in the resin will all be recollected and reused. So you don't waste virtually nothing, but you just let the resin grab it. And with that one, it's quite fun because you have to make sure you're in an area where your gems will fall, where you can actually collect them back together. So the sheets under here are all clean. And you also have to make sure when we're lifting one up that the gems are not going to fall into the other one. Oh, that was quite a few gems fall fell in there and then i'm just going to look for any obvious hair hair bubbles air bubbles that i don't enjoy or if there's any dust in there just doing the same on this piece as well um how is everybody anyway andrew knight oh johnny so excited to watch oh what would what would you be so excited to watch I me mean, do flowers Alright, so it looks like it's got a nice coverage of gems. They've definitely grabbed, gripped, not grabbed, into the resin. And then I am going to take off camera to show you what I'm seeing. Uh, just a little bit more there. Just going around all the thin areas where the resin could potentially continue to move. I don't want any bald edges. Nobody likes a bald edge. Well, not in my world anyway. All right. So I believe we are done. I'm just going to pick out a couple that fell in that I, I'm not a lover of, if I can. One's gone a little bit too far there. So we'll have to make sure the resin. No, it's too, it's too like treacle. So I'm just going to have to melt that again. Bear with me. A little bit of heat. All right, some of the dust you can see under here is not actual dust in the resin. It's underneath the board and this color here. So bear with me while I take you out of this stand. 
So you're looking for those scatterings on Amazon you gave me. So all you need to do is search for wedding table scatterings and you will come up with all kinds of crystals. All right, so I'm going to take you in close. Hopefully I've not given you any uh, dizziness there. So this is where hopefully you can see most of the crystals don't have resin on, but some of them are meeting in it. And yeah, and you may be able to see there's still some bubbles in there. I'm not stressed about those. They're not going to really impact anything, but just look at those colours. I will go over this again with a heat, uh, a, a torch very quickly just after I put the camera down. I don't know if those colours are doing it justice for you, but I'm going over to the big one now. So this one's got more bigger space of solid colour. But just look at some of those effects. But what's going to be stunning with this one is because this has got more solid colours. Um, you should see the centerpiece that's going to have more of those stripes add in a lot of value to it. But oh, it's just your malicious, in my opinion. So we are done for today. Well, for this session. So if you want to join me back in four hours from now, I will show you how I do the next level. So just to remind people what we've added today. So the resin I worked with was Mastercast One to One. I added in my Super Sparkle White. The centerpiece, which is the dark piece, is the Resin 8 pigment. This is Darkest Indigo, and that is an opaque colour. And then the deeper blue is the Open Water Blue, which is just for you online UK. And that gave you that lush, deep blue. The lighter blue is Resin 8 and that is the uh, light blue. Oh, sorry, can it focus? Light blue. And then we have our turquoise transparent in there. And then we have our table scatterings. So that is all that's gone in there. It's now curing beautifully. I need to cover it up. And I will see you in four hours. Thank you all so much for your support and hanging out with me. Come back if you want to see how this 